Despite what appears to be a clear win for former Vice President Joe Biden, again, President Trump and members of the administration say they have no plans to concede this election. Yeah, and even so, President-elect Biden is moving forward with the transition team. Uh, Biden says he'll work quickly with Congress to dramatically ramp up health care protections. But the president says he's still following claims of widespread voter fraud and ballot counting abuse. Attorney General Bill Barr issued a memo this week telling prosecutors that they can pursue substantial allegations of voting irregularities before the election is certified. Have you tried to reach out at all to the president? And if he is watching right now, what would you say to him? Mr. President, look forward to speaking with you. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the world should have every confidence the State Department is functional and successful with the president who's in office on January 20th. Senior administration officials say there are still no plans to consider inviting Biden to the White House until after all legal options are exhausted. So earlier this week, we told you the Associated Press had called the race for Senate in Arizona in favor of astronaut Mark Kelly. His lead over Senator Martha McSally is now at just under 80,000, with not enough votes left for McSally to surpass that lead. Still, Senator McSally has not conceded her race, but much like President Trump, uh, Tess has more on uh, what's going on here with the psychology part of it. That's right, Scotty. Good morning. You know, the questioning of election results really begs the question, is this political posturing or is it something deeper at play here? Maybe something psychological. So that's what we're looking into right now. Joining us this morning is licensed therapist Alicia Taylor. Good morning, Alicia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, this is interesting because some believe there is a psychology to not admitting defeat. They just don't want to say, OK, I lost. Admit to that. What gives with that? Is there a true psychology behind it? Uh, well, when we look at psychology and we look, to look at different diagnoses, uh, what we're looking at, or at least what many behavioral analysts, therapists, psychologists have been saying for quite some time, is it's, it's a trait of grandiose narcissism, where a person is very competitive, has an inflated self-esteem, uh, blames the opposition for anything that did not go their way, and exhibits a sign called cognitive dissonance, where their reality and the belief does not meet. So the reality of what's actually happening and the client, the person's belief just stays. So this is when they devalue their opponent. Um, this is when they're very aggressive, entitled. And this is what we're seeing now when it comes to this election, unfortunately. When it comes to the candidates who have not conceded yet, uh, as you mentioned, research has been done into these personality traits rooted into narcissism. Mm -hmm. So how do they, will they ever concede? How, what can we expect? I know it's hard to predict the future, but let's take Senator McSally for instance. You know, we, we just mentioned she doesn't have enough votes to overtake Mark Kelly in this. Would she ever apologize, understand that she has lost? You know, I don't know her personally, um, and I don't know, you know, I don't have her as a client either, but when we're talking about these personality traits, most likely not. They're going to continue to blame somebody or something, something went wrong, this wasn't fair, because once again, the reality of what's happening is not matching up with their belief of the situation. How could I have not went, won? I am the best candidate. Um, my my self-worth cannot be torn down by me not winning and really their self-worth is is for them a huge huge asset if if they don't have self-worth they don't have themselves so i would predict <laughs> that we may not see a concession uh but but we'll see you know people have surprised us in the past i'm hopeful but i don't mm -hmm. i don't think so that is really interesting. One quick note, could you give <laughs> advice to everybody who's still, you know, there's still so much tension right now. What's your advice to someone who's still feeling the stress as, you know, it's still not completely over yet? 
Yes, uh, and this is this is a lot of people. This is many of my clients. People just want a finite answer so they're able to have closure and move on. Uh, once again, just keep doing your self care. Um, you know, focus on what you can do to be in control of situations like this. So, you know, just knowing knowing that whatever works out, you can have a contingency plan for whatever is going to make you feel more comfortable. But yes, I mean, in, anxiety is a natural part of life. Mm-hmm. We don't like to feel it, but this is a situation situation where you're going to be anxious. So you definitely need to be using your self coping skills. You definitely need to be doing self care. Um, and I would say pick your times to watch the news, pick your favorite news station three, of course. Good morning, (laughs) Arizona, right? We know. (laughs) Yeah. And don't inflate yourself with, with constant, like, Oh my God, did we hear something? Did we hear something? Just let it be when it happens, it happens. Enjoy the rest of the news. Enjoy your life. Yes. And just try to be patient. We still have our (laughs) lives to lead. That is true there. Ashley Taylor, thank you so much for joining us and giving us this insight into the psychology of not conceding. We appreciate it. Thank you.